Sutra, the ghost king told the Buddha, "Please do not be concerned until the end of my life. In every thought, I shall protect beings of Jambudvipa at the time both of birth and of death, so that they all find tranquility. I only wish that at the time of birth and death they would believe what I say, so that they could." All be liberated and gain many benefits. At that time, the Buddha told of the Star Bodhisattva, "This great ghost king, Lord of Life, has already passed through hundreds of thousands of lives as the great ghost king, protecting beings during both birth and death. Only because of this great being's compassionate vows does he appear." Thus, in the body of a great ghost king, for in reality he is not a ghost. After one hundred seventy ends have passed, he will become a Buddha named No Appearance. Thus, come one, his end will be called happiness, and his world will be named Pure Dwelling. That Buddha's lifespan will continue for incalculable ends. Earth Star. The circumstances surrounding this great ghost king are thus: they are inconceivable, and the people and gods whom he rescues are countless. Commentary: The ghost king is very much at ease. It is not bad being a ghost king. He can make anyone he wants live. He can make anyone he wants die. Everyone's lives are in the hands of this ghost king. If he were greedy, such as an official who accepts bribes, he would certainly receive many because he controls everyone's length of life. One ghost, during the time of Dharma Master Tao Sheng, went to listen to the Dharma Master lecture on the sutras frequently. When Dharma Master Tao Sheng told the ghost to become reborn as a human being, he said, "I have been a ghost for." Three thousand years, I have no troubles and worries. Lord Sheng tells me to become a human being. I am afraid that I will not reach the end of that life. The ghost says that he is afraid that before he finishes a、uh, finishes being a human, he will create offenses, so he might as well be a ghost. See, ghosts think it is not bad being a ghost. There is a Chinese aphorism that says, "Offer the position of an emperor to a beggar who has done so for three years, and the beggar will refuse." The ghost experiences so much freedom. A ghost who has been a ghost for three thousand years will refuse to be human because he feels that ghosts have no troubles or worries. Lord Sheng, as the ghost calls Dharma Master Tao Sheng, is an honorific that you, those of you who are going to Taiwan to receive the precepts, may use. That you can use when you encounter senior masters. For instance, you may call Dharma Master Ying Xuan, Lord Ying. Actually, you could use either one of the characters in his name, whichever one rolls off the tongue. There are no rules for using a particular one. For example, you may refer to Dharma Master Dao Yuan as Lord Dao or Lord Yuan. However, now that you are going to receive the precepts, he is your precept master, so you cannot refer to him as Lord Dao or Lord Yuan. What should you call him? Call him precept master. You would be disrespectful if you were to call your precept master Lord Yuan or Lord Dao. It is most respectful to call him precept master. He is your precept master because you received the precepts with him. As for other senior masters, refer to them using one character in their name and not two. Also. When you see most monastics, you should put your palms together when you speak. Do not stare at people the way you do. Lower your eyes when you talk to anybody. This is a way to pull in your body and mind. Now that you are going to receive the precepts, there, I am going to pass on Buddhist vinaya to you Westerners. So pay special attention. 
If you uphold them well and are good representatives for Westerners, they will say, "Ah, Westerners also observe the rules so well." If you do not observe the rules when you go over there, ah, that does not work. They cannot cultivate. You lose faith for all Westerners. Even if there are people willing to leave home in the future, no one will be willing to accept them. They cannot cultivate. They cannot. We cannot accept them. As bishops and bishops, wherever you go, you must be good role models who keep the rules. Do not go against the rules. Now that the five of you are leaving for Taiwan, it would be best if you ask for recordings, since some of you understand Chinese. And some of you do not. You may bring a tape recorder and a video recorder so that you may record anything important. You may record any drama master during the precept training. With the five of you together, the ones who understand Chinese will translate for those who do not. Every time when other people are resting, you do not rest. Help yourself by telling those among you who do not understand Chinese what happened during the day. You will be united this way. Do not finish your studies there and end up not knowing anything still. This can be said to be the first time that so many Westerners go to receive the precepts. It is unprecedented, unprecedented. Study all the rules and etiquette there as you receive the precepts, so that you may return and pass them on to Americans. After you receive the precepts this year, perhaps next year or the year after, we can also transmit the precepts at our place in Minnesota, so that America can also have a precept training period with ten monks. It will be even better if we have more than three masters and seven certifiers. You are the essential people for blazing. The Buddhist trail in America. So this is a very important trip. God's King Lord of Life told the Buddha, "Please do not be concerned or worried, world honored one. Until the end of my life, as a ghost, in every thought I shall protect beings of Jambuvipa at the time both of birth and of death, so that they all find tranquility." They will live well and die well, never experiencing anything that goes against their wishes. I only wish that at the time of birth and death, they would believe what I say. One vow of mine is for all beings to obey me at the time of birth and death, the way you obey me as my disciples. If you do not listen to your master, then you are not good disciples. So that. They could all be liberated and gain many benefits. If they do not listen to the Ghost King, then they would not be good beings. The Ghost King would not protect them. At that time, the Buddha told a star bodhisattva, "This great Ghost King Lord of Life has already passed through hundreds of thousands of lives as a great Ghost King, protecting beings during both birth and death. Only because of this great being's compassionate vows." Does he appear thus in the body of a great ghost king? For in reality, he is not a ghost. He is a real great bodhisattva. Although he is a ghost king, he is a great bodhisattva who vowed to become a ghost king based on his、uh, vows of compassionate. He appears in the form of a great ghost king, but he is not actually a ghost. After one hundred seventy ends have passed, he will become a Buddha named No Appearance. Thus come one. No appearance is the true appearance. True appearance is without any appearance. His end will be called happiness, and his world will be named Pure Dwelling. We are here in the Saha world during the worthy end, while his end is the end of happiness and world named Pure Dwelling. That Buddha's lifespan will continue for incalculable eons. His life is extremely long. Earth star, you should know that the past and present circumstances surrounding this great ghost king are thus: they are inconceivable, unimaginable, and unspeakable. And the people and gods whom he rescues are countless.
Chapter Nine: The Names of Buddhas. Commentary. Reciting the names of Buddhas, I mentioned before that originally every Buddha has ten thousand titles. Then, due to the fact that people could not remember so much, the number gradually reduced to a thousand. However, people still had difficulty recalling one thousand names. They have bad memories, like I do. By the time they recite the first to the thousandth, they forget the first. As a result, the number of titles was cut down to a hundred. In the end, though, it was still troublesome to rem to remember a hundred names. Therefore, they were decreased to ten. Every Buddha has ten titles. First come one worthy of offerings of right and universal knowledge. Perfect clarity in conduct, well gone one, knower of worlds, unsurpassed knight, teacher of people and gods, Buddha and warned honored one. This is the ninth chapter called the names of Buddhas. Of the story, Sadva is about to explain what kind of merit and virtue one is going to receive by reciting the various Buddhas' names. Sutra. At that time, of the story, Sadva Masadva said to the Buddha. World honored one, I want to discuss some practices that will be helpful to beings of the future and will enable them to gain great benefit throughout their lives and deaths. World honored one, please hear my words. The Buddha told Earth Star Bodhisattva, "Now, with your expansive compassion, you wish to discuss the inconceivable events involved in rescuing all those in the six paths." Who are suffering for their offenses? This is the right time. Speak now, since my nirvana is near, so that I may soon help you complete your vows. Then neither of us will need to be concerned about beings of the present or, or future. A story would be said by said to the Buddha. Warned, honored one. Countless asamkhya ends ago, a Buddha named Balis Bodhisattva came and appeared in the world. If men or women hear hear this Buddha's name and have a momentary thought of respect, those people will overstep the heavy offenses involved in birth and death for forty ends. How much more will that be the case for those who scummed or painted this Buddha's image? Or praise and make offerings to him. The merit they obtain would be limitless and boundless. Commentary at that time, after the eighth chapter was spoken, a stubbornly sad man sat by said to the Buddha, "Won't honored one, I want to discuss some practices that will be helpful to living beings of the future, including you and I." Ah, who are present now? Do not say that you are not counted. Both of us are included in this figure. These practices will enable them, the living beings, to gain great benefit throughout their lives and deaths. Won't honored one, please? I sincerely request that you hear me explain my vow with words. The Buddha told Earth Star Bodhisattva, "Now, with your expansive compassion, mind that you are bringing forth." You wish to discuss the inconceivable events involved in rescuing all those in the six paths, including beings from the heavens, humans, asuras, hell beings, hungry ghosts, and animals who are suffering for their offenses. This is the right time. Hurry up and speak now, since my nirvana is near. From this statement. We can conclude that Earth Star Sutra was spoken after the Dharma Flower Sutra and before the Nirvana Sutra. The Buddha continued, "Speak up, so that I may soon help you complete your vows. Then neither of us will need to be concerned about beings of the present or future. I will not have to worry about them any longer." Earth Star Bodhisattva said to the Buddha. Wound on a dwan. Call this asamkhya ends ago. Asamkhya is a Sanskrit word that refers to limitless and countless ends. There was a Buddha named Balis Bodhi Thus Kamwan who appeared in the world. His body is without bound. It pervades the whole empty space and the Dharma realm. If men or women of Southern Jammu Vipa hear this Buddha's name and have a momentary thought of respect, those 
People will overstep the heavy offenses involved in birth and death for 14 great ends. How much more will that be the case for those who sculpt or paint this Buddha's image or praise and make offerings to him? The merit they obtain will be limitless and boundless that you will never finish counting because there is so much. I am going to share a public record with you now. What is it? When the Buddha dwelt in the world, there was an old man who wanted to leave home and cultivate the way. The Buddha was not at Jetta Grove then. His disciples were annoyed at seeing the old man. They wondered, he is so old, poor and sloppy. Why does he want to leave home? These are hard to have certified to the fruition, observed. This old man has no good rules within 80,000 great ends whatsoever. He cannot live the whole life because one must have good rules to do so. Do not claim it is easy to live the whole life, for it takes body seeds sowed in the past lives. In past lives, one can only leave home after planting numerous good roots throughout past lives. Even though you want to leave home, you will not be able to if you like good roots. You might want to, but then you think, no, no, leaving the home life is too difficult. It is not good. Do not leave home. You might back down and say. Do not go, do not go. Those are hearts saw that the old man had no good rules and rejected him, being poor to the point that he had no food or clothes. Uh, the 90 or 100 year old man who had difficulty walking thought, Now that I have lived to this age, I suppose I could obtain some peace by living the whole life, but it turned out that the Buddha's disciples declined to take me in. Hence, he started to cry, sobbing and walking at the same time. The new idea emerged what was said. He was mulling over a scheme to commit suicide by jumping down the Ganges River. He was not far from there, and when he was about to jump into the Ganges, Shakyamuni Buddha came and said, Hey, sir, what are you doing? You... Want to swim at your age? Your arms and legs are not so flexible. You cannot swim. The old man said, No, I'm going to die. I'm going to put an end to my life instead of living. There's no meaning to living. Shakyamuni Buddha said, Oh, why is it meaningless for you to go on living? Can you tell me? The old man said, I felt that nothing is meaningful, so I wanted to live the whole life, follow Shakyamuni Buddha and cultivate. But when I went there today requesting to live the whole life, the Buddha's disciples rejected me, telling that I have no good rules. Since I cannot leave home when I want to, what is the use of being alive? I feel that being alive is worse off than being dead, so I wanted to jump into the Ganges River and drink its waters until I'm full so that I may become a young man who lives a home life in another incarnation. Since the Buddha's disciples do not like old people, also probably because of how ugly I am, no one likes me. Shakyamuni Buddha said, You want to live a home life? Do not jump into the river. I will accept you as a disciple. You can come back. The old man asked, who are you? Shakyamuni Buddha answered, I am Shakyamuni Buddha. You are Shakyamuni Buddha? You will accept me. Shakyamuni Buddha said, It is so sad the way you cry. I will accept you as an old disciple. The Buddha brought the old man back and spoke Dharma for him. As soon as the, the Buddha spoke Dharma, the old man certified to the fruition of a hardship. When the Buddha was alive, many people certified to the fruition of a hardship. The Buddha looked at his causes and conditions and spoke the Buddha Dharma for him, so that the man certified to the fruition. Some disciples think, this old monster is old and without good rules. How can he certify to the fruition? They became doubtful of the Buddha Dharma and asked the world honored one, Really, this old man should not leave home. But how come you accepted him and he certified to the fruition? It is awfully strange. We are skeptical about the Buddha Dharma. 
Shakyamuni Buddha said, "Two arhats only know about the cause and effect, and the good and bad throughout it." Two thousand great ends, whereas you do not see anything beyond this period of time. For instance, you can see things that occur in this house, but nothing outside it. This old man was a lodger in the mountains more than eighty thousand great ends ago, when he encountered a tiger that was going to bite him to death. He recited Namo Buddha once. For that, the conditions now repent for him to leave the home life and satisfy to the fruition. It is not happenstance for people who wish to leave the home life. They may have recited Namo Buddha many times to leave home in this lifetime. Otherwise, I would not accept them as disciples either.